Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar where we'll be chewing over cloud's role in digital transformation and how digital can only succeed when you have a smart cloud strategy. Today we've brought you an expert panel for a question and answer session so please do get involved and ask questions as we go along and we'll try and keep it nice and interactive. So my name's Ollie O'Donoghue and I'm a research director here at HFS covering IT services and I'll take this opportunity to introduce our panel today. Um, so I'm joined by Microland CTO Robert Wysocki uh, and Ellie Mays, SVP of Cloud Engineering and Operations, Sathish Ravala. Um, so maybe if you, uh, you guys could just give us a quick overview of your roles and what you're currently working on uh, so we can get to know you a little bit better, perhaps starting with you, Rob. Hi, hi, uh, this is Bob Wysocki. I recently joined Microland as a CTO uh, last November. I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia, but on any given day these days, I find myself in either Bangalore or London or San Jose. So I think my body's a little confused what continent it's on. Um, uh, these days I'm, I'm having fun, not only helping our clients accelerate their digital transformation, but uh, leading transformation of Microland itself as a service provider uh, into the new age. Thanks, Hi, Bob. my name is... Oh, sorry. So, sorry, over to you, Satish. Oh, no, really. Uh, hi, my name is Satish Rawla, Senior Vice President, Cloud Engineering and Operations at LMA. And I'll talk about LMA a little bit later, what we do and uh, uh, how we are helping the digital transformation in the industry. Uh, my role here at LMA is uh, uh, cloud engineering uh, and uh, cloud operations, which covers basically all of the infrastructure and the platform engineering and, uh, and operations as well, So, which is basically including uh, a journey to the cloud. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the Q&A session. Perfect. Thank you both. Well, that's our panel introduced and raring to go. But before we get the Q&A session roll, I want to set the scene by talking through some of the market trends we at HFS are seeing. Now, I'm sure all of you HFS fans out there won't be a stranger to the digital one office concept, which is how we set out the different building blocks of a true customer first digital organization. Now, all of these pieces lock in together to drive this organization from the back office to the middle office and front office. And at the front, we have what we all want in a customer interface, something that's mobile, social interactive with data being used to help drive that greater personalization we all crave and often miss when it's not there. Now, the important part is that you can't optimize these areas in the front office if your back and middle office aren't in order and are lagging behind. You need that all important digital underbelly, intelligent digital support functions and intelligent digital processes to drive and enable that customer first approach. And cloud plays a vital role uh, in, in all of this, so much so that we've paid special attention to the role of the cloudification of processes, IT and software in helping form the essential enabling intelligent one office that drives those digital ambitions, something which we'll be chewing through with our panel in a little more detail. Now, in my experience, the digital one office resonates really well with business and IT leaders alike. And coming from an IT background myself, I think one of the core reasons is captured well in this chart from one of our recent IT services blueprints, which tracks some of those major changes in approach, expectation and culture that we're seeing in IT as it shifts from legacy can't do IT to as a service can do IT. Now, I won't go through all of these points, as I'm sure many of us are already aware of the, the change that's been driving through IT over the past few years. But here are the key points. Um, we were driving uh, away from complicated, tied down infrastructure in IT to simplified, agile and responsive setups. We we're moving away from hard coded applications designed for IT to support um, and stacked in data centers to configurable applications designed for the business in cloud based infrastructure. And certainly with my background in IT service management, I've seen that last shift in action um, as, as table stakes for any new or ongoing development shifted from loads of IT guys in a room um, talking about how they can, they can design something that's easy to support and they can keep control of to opening those doors and scope to what the business needs and enabling that business to go forward. And this demand may seem like I'm talking about a utopian future, but we're actually seeing this, uh, this shift in approach more than ever in the market. 
On this slide, we've managed to break apart the high value IT services market into traditional IT services and those digital as a service one office solutions. And the trend is unmistakable. If we take a look at these projections, um, those traditional legacy services are eroding enormously with as a service solutions growing enough to not only bite into that market and fill those gaps, but also grow the overall market as a whole. So the demand is very real out there. And of course, a reasonable chunk of this revenue and growth sits in the cloud services space. To get an understanding of how this mass migration to the cloud is shaping up, in our latest IT services research, we asked over 300 IT services buyers to estimate the proportion of their IT processes that are delivered through a cloud service or solution. And we can see uh, a huge chunk of enterprise IT processes are now in the cloud, with some organizations um, pushing towards completely cloud-based IT infrastructure and many more driving in that direction with over 50% of key business solutions, including uh, the lifeblood of modern enterprises like email and enterprise applications sitting in the cloud. We can also see there's plenty more work to do for many organizations if they're going to embrace the cloud and use it to set up the strong digital foundation we've talked about in the Digital One office. So here we can see where the industry is now, but what about the future? Well, on our next slide, um, we, we asked our enterprise IT buyers, what does the future look like? And really, we have an almost universal push to greater cloud delivery over the next two years with those enterprise applications leading the charge, where just over 10% are saying cloud delivery will decrease for their enterprise applications. But everyone else is advising it'll, it'll pretty much grow. And some of those guys are pointing out it's going to grow enormously. And, and that theme carries through in most of the other areas, right down to, to email software at the bottom. So there's obviously plenty of work out there. Um, for service providers and enterprise leaders alike to help drive this, uh, what seems like almost an economy-wide push towards cloud delivery. So hopefully that set the scene a little bit. We can see how important cloud is to help drive that digital one office concept um, and become a customer first digital organization. And we can see there's a clear appetite as enterprises push to migrate more and more to the cloud. So now it's time to talk a little bit about the hows and the whys of building a smart cloud strategy to drive digital with two experts who have seen it in action. So just to remind everyone, please ask questions throughout the webinar and we'll ask them as we go along. Right, so let's let's kick off with, uh, with a, a question to Satish. Now, I, I've had the benefit of chatting to you before about your cloud journey and we can clearly see um, that in general organizations are continuing to show an insatiable appetite for cloud. But of course, it's motive and incentive so it'd be really great if you could uh, I guess set the scene with us by telling us what your main drivers were for uh, for your amb amb ambitious transformation project right so well, thanks uh, uh, for uh, thanks Ollie for asking that question so um, we started uh, uh, we, uh, maybe before I answer that question maybe it's a good idea to give a little bit of an uh, overview of LMA and what we do so that uh, there is a context for audience so we here at LMA, our goal is simple. We want to automate everything automatable in the mortgage industry with digital transformation, enabling our customers a process home mortgage loans uh, and fulfilling the American dream with all the latest and greatest technologies behind the scenes that we can leverage like machine learning and predictive analytics and you know, uh, all kinds of uh, great technology uh, toolkit that we can leverage. And, uh, We've been going through this journey for the last 20 years, and we started this company, uh, LMA started like uh, uh, 20 years back. And uh, we've gone through a lot of transformation in the uh, in last 20 years. Uh, and we currently are a platform uh, company enabling our customers uh, uh, with uh, digital transformation. So when it comes to digital transformation, uh, you know, uh, the how cloud plays a role and uh, um, uh, I'll talk about that in a second. So when we talk about digital transformation, it, it, it starts with uh, in, inside in and out, inside out as well. The inside in is basically when we are talking about automating everything automatable in the mortgage industry, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's a great vision. But inside in as well, we want to make sure that we have a platform that can sustain and uh, scale and uh, support the needs of growing market in the cloud industry. So we started with this journey called, uh, a, a, you know, building a platform and uh, open the APIs, the same APIs that we leverage and our customers also leverage. 
when we talk about uh, you know distributed systems and developing a platform, developing uh, APIs and opening them up and becoming a true platform company, that requires a strong foundation. At the same time, that requires a fast moving, uh, agile uh, kind of like cloud to support that uh, innovation and uh, speed up delivery and the, the elastic needs of uh, capacity. Uh, and also we don't want to be in the business of like, you know, building data centers and maintaining data centers, ordering the hardware and like, you know, procuring the hardware. That's not the core of our business. So we, we smartly chose the journey of like going towards cloud and enabling, uh, uh, leveraging the public cloud providers to, uh, you know, to innovate faster for our customers. All our customers expect is like, you know, the, the innovation from us. And then uh, we've been enabling that. And uh, as a result of it, 35% of our U.S. mortgage uh, loans go through our platform today. And that's only possible because we are able to leverage the uh, the great and the best of the breed uh, backend technologies. Uh, cloud is one of them in that process. And we selected a cloud vendor, and we've been going through their journey since 2016. I'm proud to say that uh, uh, we we have uh, uh, definitely leveraged the public cloud to the best of uh, 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 to the best uh, uh, you know uh, industry best standards. I would say. And uh, as a result of it, we were able to deliver five or six new innovative products to the market and uh, our customers are happy. We are happy. So it's a win-win deal. Cool. Okay. Thank you. So I mean, that's a really, really kind of detailed answer about, um, I guess, all of those, all of those drivers. And it sounds like it's, it's a wide variety of touch points um, to kind of incent that, that investment and that approach. Um, so, so um, to kind of give us that broader perspective, um, Bob, in, in your experience, you know, you've dealt with with um, several clients on 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 kind of a similar journey and doing a similar piece of work. Um, how do you see enterprises uh, adopting next gen um, next gen digital technologies to enhance their business outcomes? Thanks, Ollie. You know, first I, I say what I see is a, dich a dichotomy. Um, I think that there are those that are uh, adopting next gen and digital well. And then, uh, sadly, there's uh, those that I see that, that aren't doing it so well. And I'd say it's quite easy to spot the difference. You know, all you need to do is ask the enterprise, you know, what are you doing and why are you doing this and sit back and listen. Those that are not doing it well, you know, what you're going to hear in the next few paragraphs from them is uh, something that describes very much an IT project, right? They'll talk about their migration to the cloud. They'll talk about transformation of the network, they'll talk about some modernization of digital workplace technologies. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it'll be, you know, lots of details, but devoid of any kind of business outcome associated with any of that. And that's a, a clear sign in my mind, you know, of a, of a client or an enterprise that's kind of off the rails. Um, then there, there are those enterprises who are actually doing it, you know, correctly. And here, you know, they, they begin with the end in mind. They have very clear uh, some significant business outcome that they want to reach. I mean, you just heard uh, Satish talk about, you know, their their business outcome of of automated uh, the mortgages. You know, for maybe uh, some of our clients, a, a large manufacturing company, it it may be that they want to increase their asset availability, uh, decreasing unplanned downtime of their assets. And for them, the selection of next gen digital technologies, you know, evolves from that business outcome, and and they pick you know, some uh, IOT solution uh, to, to focus on. Uh, others may be a financial services or retail uh, firm. And for them, you know, it's all about enhancing customer experience, whether that be in a branch or, or in a store. And given that business outcome, you know, it's more a combination maybe of, of mobile application and, and network transformation is the next gen uh, digital technologies that, that's relevant to their business outcome. And then, you know, maybe third example, an insurance company or something like that. And they're they're trying to reduce the cycle time to quote. And for them, uh, digital technology, you know, has to do more with uh, re-architecting a monolithic application into microservices and sustaining the agility with a DevOps platform. You know, and so I, I don't mean to make it seem like it's a one-two snap, you know, come up with a business outcome, come up with a digital technology, and, you know, that can all be done in, in days or even weeks. You know, I'd like to give you an example of, um, you know, what I see the depth of a company that's doing well went through to align their business outcomes and, and, and use of digital technology. And this was a, a company that, 
you know, they, they started with taking a very broad view of their business lines and, and they, uh, they chose um, to, to work on their commercial uh, area and they wanted to improve their, their customer experience. And so they sat down, they, they mapped out the complete customer journey through their process from, from uh, soup to nuts. It started with even at, so far up front as, you know, what do their customers do to research providers? How do they compare one provider against another? Uh, how do they out, act, ultimately, you know, contract with, with this particular uh, customer of ours? How do they onboard their customers? And, and how do they then service their customers in all aspects of actual transactions, billing, help desk, and so on? The most important thing that really kind of opened my eyes and I thought was, was tremendous on their part was not only did they look at, you know, what their customers were doing in interacting with them, they also consciously thought of what were their customers thinking when they were interacting with, with, this, with this client and what were they feeling? And for that, for me, that was like, wow, you know, that makes, that resonates so well to, to, if you're really trying to drive customer experience, it's not just what customers are doing, but it's what they're thinking and feeling as well. And so they mapped out, you know, what they thought they did well, what, what they, where they were missing opportunities in their existing process. And it all came down then to, you know, okay, there's some business capabilities that they had to do better at, uh, maybe some better logistics, some better operations, uh, some more seamless communications um, from all channels. And only then, you know, did they finally get to, um, okay, in order to have better operations, you know, we, we want to have analytics to go from preventative to predictive maintenance, to get better logistics that meant network transformation to them, um, to get more seamless channels meant use of mobile apps and, and service desk chatbots and, and uh, better use of social media. So, you know, I, I think the, the message is, you know, don't, don't, don't go after digital just because it's digital. You know, make sure you're aligning it with a business outcome and, and you're choosing something uh, with that North Star in mind. I guess uh, I, I guess uh, the, the question that, that, that's, that certainly jumps to my mind, I'm sure uh, members of the audience thinking it as well, is is, is there going to be a shift in approach, do you think? So we, we've talked a little bit about, about outcomes, but but as, as you've pointed out, often it's it's tough just to figure out what business outcome it is you, you want to you want to achieve. Um, is is that something that that you you also work with with clients to figure out to kind of figure out, you know, this is this is what what's central to your to your digital transformation journey. This is how we need to fix it. Yeah, you know, I, I you know some sometimes the client is already through that part and we can jump in after the fact, but oftentimes it is that you know two-day session. You know maybe it's a brainstorming session with the uh, with the CEO, CDO, CIO, and get them to focus in on you know what is the business outcome. You you have ones that you could select from, given your your status in the industry that you're in, uh, competitive advantages or disadvantages. You know will help uh, lead through uh, that process of of what outcome they want to focus on because it it starts the, the journey starts there really. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so we we've kind of got the the scene set there off uh, off off that data for the insatiable appetite for cloud. We you know we've heard um, some of those key drivers and what's happening else elsewhere in the the, the industry. Um, so let's take a look at this this particular. Um, enterprise transformation journey. So, Satish, we, we've we've covered kind of those those main drivers, those those key things that, that that you wanted out of the process. But how did you set the expectations with your executives and stakeholders? And I'm sure this is something that members of the audience um, uh, might be grappling with themselves. It's certainly something that, that that I've I've had trouble with. You know, kind of figuring out what it is that that we're going to. Um, throw out there that people are going to be able to get their teeth stuck into to get behind so so what sort of um quantifiable results did you champion to drive throughout ellie may thanks so uh yeah this this graphic looks a lot better than my whiteboard first whiteboard drawing that looked like a spider web so uh let me talk about our cloud journey how i approach that ellie may so uh, this kind of like cloud journey and uh, uh, you know how why are we doing anything like this is basically starts with simple fundamental objective, which is help our customers and you know faster deliver deliver the services or uh, you know uh, whatever that uh, our business is set to to our customers faster. That's the fundamental goal. 
in order to do that, uh, that's a simple thing, right? So uh, then we have to start from top down and that's the approach I took here. So I, uh, instead of like, you know, uh, some companies choose to move Dev and QA to AWS, uh, or AWS or Azure or Google and declare a victory. In my case, I said, uh, you know, let's uh, take the, the uh, you know, right path and uh, start with top down, uh, talking to business stakeholders, talking to, uh, 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 you, you know, our uh, uh, executive team and the selling uh, the story. And once you get the buy-in, then set the right uh, technology strategy to enable that uh, cloud journey, uh, like developing platform services, what do we build in-house, what do we leverage uh, from the cloud providers, and, uh, you know, how do we, how long we're going to run in the hybrid cloud fashion, and then how do we get 100% to the cloud, all of that strategy defined, and then uh, take this as like more uh, vision and, uh, you know, milestone approach than a piecemeal approach. And then we have, uh, we have done that fantastically well, and as a result of it, and we are now in a hybrid cloud fashion, so we will be uh, uh, in uh, uh, public cloud 100% uh, sometime very soon. Uh, but at the same time, the, the, the results are visible to the customers. Our customers are the real winners in this case because we, they are enjoying the innovation that we are developing on top of these uh, you know, decisions that we made. So um, that kind of like, uh, um, uh, you know, summary of like how I approach this problem here. Uh, and again, uh, Bob also mentioned that everything starts with simple thing, like, you know, the business problem. You got to solve a business problem. And uh, just because these are the buzzwords in the market, like, you know, you pick one and then go with one and then you may, you may choose to, you, you may go in the wrong direction. And uh, the example I was quoting, like, you know, moving just like, you know, some of the low hanging fruits is not, the right uh, probably approach and you have to think uh, much more bigger than that. Yeah, I mean, that so that, that makes perfect sense. And Joe, I, I spoke to um, uh, uh, an enterprise bar at a, a client organization a little while ago that said a, a very similar thing. So um, we always talk about, you know, it's not always the shiniest tool that, that's the best one for the job. Um, and they, they came at it from a different angle and said, well, the only problem is if we didn't if we didn't have that, nobody in the organization would want it. So we have to kind of sell this is the latest technology. Otherwise, nobody will nobody will touch it. So it's a it's a it's an interesting approach. Um, Bob, from from your point, how do how do you guys there um, help enterprises make this transformation? So it's you know it's a big piece of work, um, and often it's a bespoke piece of work that uh, you know varies enormously by by organisation to organisation. Um, so so what what are some of the areas that you believe are becoming critical to manage and, and stay ahead of of customer expectation? Yeah, I, I mean I think um, the biggest thing maybe is is to manage expectations, right, and to be Focus on what you're doing and, and why you're doing it. Um, you know, definitely be careful of your why. Uh, in the last 10 years or so, we've got this culture of IT was a, a backroom function, and, and so much uh, focus was on taking cost out. Um, and while cost out is, is still definitely relevant, you know, in the next 10 years forward, um, IT has taken much more of a, a front room in terms of, of business value. So in terms of managing expectations, you know, if you allow yourself to focus on just, you know, cost out um, only and, and not these other areas of business value, it can it can definitely lead to bad decisions and, and approaches. And, and let me give you an example, you know, situation that, that I was involved in. Um, you know, any uh, a material line item in any IT budget can be network transport. Um, although I have a lot of friends in the telecom business, you know, I, I tell them all they're very expensive. Um, and so if, if your so-called transformation journey is only about cost out, um, you might go through a journey where you, you get rid of, you know, MPLS circuits in lieu of ISP circuits, but you, you do it through a VPN technology, which pretty much leaves kind of a static configuration in place. And so if your goal is cost out, well, you just, decre you just achieve cost out. You, 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 you know, you reduced your budget maybe by 50, 60%, but you're not improving experience, you're not improving productivity, you're not improving business agility with that approach. And so in terms of, in terms of managing expectations, which, you know, kind of critical thing to manage, you know, I, I like to think of it this way. Think of it as, you know, change the way you work. And if you change the way you work, then, you know, cost is going to come out as a natural byproduct. But if you just chase costs, you're going to end up, you know, doing something that, that ultimately is, is not, uh, not going to be in your best interest. Um, so, 
that's what I think about that one. Yeah, that makes makes perfect sense. I mean, we've got so 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 we've got some questions starting to roll in. I'll ask um uh, I'll, I'll throw in a couple of audience questions. They, they they kind of fit the the general the general piece that we're talking about, um, and, and this one's for 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 you, Satish. So, um, what were the biggest challenges in your cloud journey, and how did you approach the change um, in your IT team's operating model? Um, so, that's, I, you know, I, I can imagine that's a, um, a a challenge that a lot of organisations are grappling with that that kind of that piece of change management in IT. So, how did you overcome that? Yeah, so it's a great question, by the way. So that's the question I had in my mind as well. A lot of people ask me, so I practice answering this question multiple times. I can answer that. Um, so uh, there are a couple of things. One is definitely security is the top of the mind concern for a lot of people. When we talk about cloud, people think cloud is open and then anybody can go in there. And uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's the perception, right, in, in a lot of people's mind. And uh, we deal with uh, uh, LMA, we deal with a lot of banks and credit unions, a lot of financial companies, right, out there. They are our customers. Uh, when we talk about uh, 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 banks and credit unions or financial institutions, uh, their primary concern is always going to be the security. And how do we address those things? And uh, uh, cloud is definitely, uh, uh, it can be configured in many ways that you want it. And uh, security was number one uh, top of the mind uh, in people's uh, list, so that we addressed in a, a in a great way. And there are so many so many technologies and solutions out there that you can leverage and make uh, cloud much more stronger than what you can run in the private data centers. That's one. And uh, think about there are two ways of cloud. For our customers, we are a cloud company because they leverage our cloud platform to process the loans. And in turn, in the back end, we leverage cloud, uh, you know, infrastructure, cloud platform services from different public cloud providers uh, 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 that to deliver those solutions to our customers. So cloud is everywhere. If you think about that context, uh, uh, your laptop is your cloud. And uh, uh, back in the days, now cloud is uh, there are multiple cloud providers, uh, including software as a service cloud providers to the infrastructure cloud providers to uh, you know, think of any app in your iPhone, that's also a cloud basically. So there's cloud everywhere. And uh, uh, how we approach this problem uh, is basically addressing the security is number one. And the cost, there is a perception that uh, cloud are, cloud, sorry, cloud is expensive. And we, did, we deal with that, our customers and also with uh, our backend cloud providers as well. And, uh, 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 you know, we help our customers to uh, reduce the loan origination cost significantly by going through the digital transformation by moving their loan origination process to our platform. And when we sell that story and uh, customers do see that once they switch to our platform, reducing the origination costs significantly uh, because they don't have, there is uh, uh, so much of automation intelligence built into our platform, which help our lenders to make the right decisions with analytics and the machine learning and all of, all of the, behind the behind the scenes. At the same time, we leverage our public cloud providers and some other cloud providers for a lot of things that we deliver. In those contexts, like you know, if, uh, we see the cost benefits as well because if you do it right, clouds can be really, really cost effective, and uh, uh, that's where like doing it right is more uh, important than like just uh, uh, you know taking a step to the cloud journey. And there are many, many, many things that uh, you have to consider. Uh, like for example, I'll throw auto scaling container technology, adopting container technologies to many other ways that you can leverage in the cloud journey. So I'd, I'd almost be interested, I mean, again, this is this is a challenge that, that you know, not, not even not even just for, for cloud really, you know, this this kind of this broader change management piece. Um, so I'd, I'd be interested to, to, to hear if there's anything from, um, I, I guess the provider's point, so so from, from you, Bob, because, Often that that kind of initial or organization or inertia or reluctance to, to change can be one of the first obstacles that a to coming in has got to overcome. So is there is there any advice that you could give the uh, the the the, um, the the asker of that question? Yeah, I, I mean I think um, at the risk of using another buzzword, um, first and foremost, uh, Microland thinks of itself as being a, a digital accelerator um, towards uh, an enterprise's cloud or business uh, digital transformation, maybe more than cloud. But let me explain that, you know, a little bit. And you, you spoke in the beginning about, you know, the need for collaborative partnerships 
this is absolutely you know in the DNA of, of Microlands culture. It's a it's a main uh, factor, and uh, what I'll unabashedly say is an incredible track record that we have in, in retaining clients throughout the years. Um, so in and and helping them with their journey, you know the business side. Uh, we, we know that digitalization is, is transforming every single industry. Enterprises have to uh, reinvent themselves or, or be disrupted. And so they concentrate you know, on their strategy, they create a vision, they plan their path. And the primary focus and the historical skills that they bring to the table are the business side. You know, They may not necessarily have the, tech, the talent, the skills, or, or quite frankly, the time. Uh, to keep up with um, ever increasing pace of change, you know, because let's face it, these you know uh, uh, these these technology advances are coming out almost you know literally weekly. Um, that's not an overstatement, although it may seem to be. Um, on a on a broad level, uh, you know, and so that's where Microland comes in to help an, an enterprise. Um, on a broad level, a business needs to you know have some kind of business gain, whether it's increased profitability, drive customer satisfaction, or, or whatever they need a new fundamental set of capabilities to operate in this world. And it's, you know, it's a merge of, of, of uh, business and, and digital. It's things like the ability to collaborate and share business data, you know, in an ecosystem of partners very safely and easily. Um, uh, Shatish talked about that, you know, and, and the, the providing a loan is definitely sharing um, business data, you know, across many different pieces of the, of the value chain. And it's ingesting, processing, analyzing, correlating, generating insights on massive amounts of, of unique data. And so, you know, to the, to the tune of your digital underbelly, there's got to be some engine at the core of an enterprise uh, that enables, you know, this agile work, the lowest cost point, the, uh, you know, complete visibility to an estate. So uh, Microland tries to act as a digital accelerator uh, by partnering with a, with a business to create this engine. Uh, keeping it aligned, as I said earlier, about you know meeting their business outcomes. What we you know specifically do to get to the core of your question, it does depend on what stage of a transformation somebody's in. If if they're early on, uh, as we said earlier, it may be a consulting exercise to help them assess their capabilities. Um, how are they going to set up? You know um, how to how to execute digitally. If somebody's a little bit further along, you know they may have already grabbed a specific initiative. And but they you know they know what they want to do but they don't know how to go about doing it and so that may be kind of helping lead them through a, a design thinking session uh, to create the solution and, and an implementation uh, plan and approach um, or you know quite frankly it's 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 just as often that somebody is a mature uh, enterprise um, they 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 have this skill maybe it's a bit of a do-it-yourself shop but they have uh, you know they have a blind spot or just maybe a particular uh, skill that they're 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 lacking and that they need augmented, and so perhaps you know we help them with a DevOps transformation or um, you know a network maybe from a simplification perspective they just don't care to deal with the complexity of a branch network so they're they would like help in a network transformation and manage that as a service on an ongoing basis. So um, these are all different areas. I guess it depends on you know where the client is in their journey and and what kind of help they need. Well, you've rather expertly um, shifted us onto our next section, actually, which is that that broader partnership piece. Um, so, so thanks. <laughs> um, so, uh, th this one uh, is is aimed at Satish, I think. So, um, if there's if there's one thing um, that that I know we're always talking about here at, at HFS, it's the need for engagements to move on kind of that traditional transactional. Uh, approach and, and to finally start building those partnerships, which Bob's just been talking about. Um, so, Satish, in your view, um, what what does uh, a, a, like a true partnership look like? You know, because I'm 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 fortunate in that I've got a dichotomy in that I try to be quite positive, um, but I'm also very cynical. So the positive part of me thinks, oh, there must be wonderful partnerships out there, but the cynic in me thinks it's all marketing. So it'd be great to hear from from your point what what this kind of this partnership piece means. Yeah, that's a great question again. So. Um... In, in, in this uh, current generation uh, of uh, technology transformation, I would say, uh, there is nothing called vendor per se, right? You know, so we believe strongly that LMA as a company, we don't, our customers don't treat us like vendors. They, they treat us like partners. And uh, we feel that every in and day out, right? So, uh, the, because if we succeed, they succeed. If they succeed, we succeed. It's a win-win deal. 
and uh, they truly help us to succeed. And we we take that as a serious responsibility to help uh, to innovate faster and deliver uh, high quality solutions to our customers. And when it comes to our partnership uh, uh, that we work with our partners, uh, uh, we take the same approach as well. And uh, we normally don't pick a vendor for just for a solution. Uh, we, we pick a partner for long-term association. Uh, and uh, definitely like, you know, uh, Microland falls into that category because we've been working with Microland for a long time, much before Cloud Journey began. And uh, so, uh, and uh, they win, we win, and uh, there are many other vendors like that, uh, many other partnership partner vendors like that as well that we work with. And uh, I truly believe in uh, the philosophy that you, you help uh, providing right level of feedback or business requirements to your partner vendor. At the same time, if they deliver a great solution, it becomes truly a win-win deal. Then like in a point in time, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a vendor come in and go kind of thing. That's like a, you know, outdated model in my view. And 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 Bob, from from your point, so so a huge part of I guess being that that technology partner um, is is that you'll always need to be kind of investing in in your your offerings, your capabilities, and your business model um, to ensure that your customers always stay on top of their game. That's kind of your part of of that partnership deal more often than not. So how do how do you guys do that? How do you how do you make sure you're you're constantly at the um, I, I guess the tip of the spear when it comes to to innovation and the way you approach um, partnership. Yeah, I'd like to hit on two things because I think you rightly said part of it's capability and part of it's business model. And I think a lot of times it's just a focus on, you know, capability when, when business model uh, needs just as much attention. On the capability pace, you know, I guess I would want to talk about automation as a clear area for investment. And I am using that uh, term in its broadest sense, you know, AI, ML, predictive intelligence, RPA, so on and so forth. I saw a quote, uh, a briefing note um, from a conference late last year that really strongly resonated with me when, as soon as I saw it. And it said, you know, if labor was the arbitrage of the first decade of the century, then it, it's now become automation. And I, I think that is so true. Um, customers stay on top when they receive value. And I think value is created anytime, you know, you're able to make someone's life easier, which is what automation does. It takes out that those manual touch points uh, you know, the difference between cycle time and actual work time is usually orders of magnitude, right? So anything you can do to reduce that um, is, is value back to your to your customers. Um, from a coming from a remote management and monitoring heritage, Microland has always had a great capability in automation, but it was focused internally. Uh, it was focused on driving Microland employee worker productivity. Uh, to support kind of the traditional year-over-year -year productivity that has been delivered in when IT was a, a cost-out world. And so now looking forward, the investment that we're making is, is taking that capability, that automation capability, and turning it externally, pointing it at, at our customers' business processes, pointing it at our customers' employees and their productivity. And so while TCO reduction is still, you know, can very much be a valid outcome of, of automation, there's other things like business agility that, that Satish talked about, so important in his business, um, end user uh, or customer experience productivity, and even in, uh, increasing predictability of, of operations. All those things drive value. So Microland is making significant investments in, in developing platforms for automation uh, holistically. This is not just putting in point solutions uh, for this service or that service. It's a, more of a repeatable platform approach it can be something that we do bake into when we provide services, but it's also something that we could expose, you know, as a platform itself, even if you're not uh, consuming some kind of ongoing service from us. And then in, in terms of how do you keep, you know, moving the needle up, um, you know, you've heard me use the word ecosystem a number of times. I think right now we're focused on automation between us and our customers or any enterprise and their customers. And I think where the market is going to go um, and the, where the industry is going to go is the more you can create that automation between a suite of, of providers, right? So if I take like a hospital as an example, you know, there's an ecosystem that actually serves the hospital. There's the doctors, the nurses, the insurance providers, the medical equipment. 
the more that they can collaborate easily through automation, um, then you have, you know, value being generated, you know, in the whole ecosystem, not just between, you know, one relationship. So that's on the capability side. On the business model side, um, you know, I, I think what we're trying to invest in is, is purposely making uh, a further positive turn, um, not just contracting as a service on a consumption basis, but how do you actually, uh, you know, start to contract on, on business outcomes. The more that I can align my services to deliver, you know, with exactly what my customer needs are, what they care about as an inco outcome, uh, the better I can be. Um, so that requires both, you know, uh, just a obvious contracting change away from the service cost and SLA um, onto things like uh, increased NPS scores or some measurable business gain. I'd say more importantly, it really requires a mindset shift. You know, it's a mindset shift away from delivering IT services uh, versus delivering business services. And, and if I can use just, you know, a very quick example, think about deploying, you know, Microsoft Teams. If I deploy that as an IT service, I install the software, I make it available to my users, and I call my job done. Right? I, I have no idea if anybody's using it, if they're getting any value out of it, um, but you know, I, I delivered it. The software, I delivered it. And, and that's not where you know, Michael Ann tries to be. We try to be delivering a, a business service, which means you know, in this case, maybe I'll use analytics to say, you know, I'm just not gonna deploy Teams and set it up. I'll look at you know the past 60 days. I'll figure out what documents have been transferred between who. I'll pre-populate you know environment so that uh, uh, people don't have to spend you know the hours to set up their environment. And then I'll go further and you know measure um, how that affects their productivity as you know a legal department or as an HR department, and kind of have that joint uh, goal with with my customer. So contracting, I think, and 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 um, the business model is, is almost equally as important as a differentiator as technical capability in some cases. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So, I mean, we've, we've got loads of questions pouring in, so I'd, so I'd use this opportunity to, to, to fire a couple around um, before we move to the, to the next section. Um, so we've got a, John, this is, this is a, a tough question, so I'm hoping um, you, you both are still very much my friends afterwards. Um, but if, if I, I could find this one, at, at Satish, first of all, um, and it's, it's quite, you know, philosophical almost, uh, what does digital mean? to Ellie May, and it's always one of those interesting questions to ask, it, it sort of means a different thing to everyone, I think, dependent on where you sit and, and, and what your what, what your role is and how you experience technology. Um, but, but that's a, you know, that, that'd be an interesting question to hear your perspective on. That's a great question. So, um, uh, we have a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, our executive vice president uh, of corporate strategy delivered multiple, uh, uh, you know, uh, sessions on this thing. So if you're interested, you can go to our website and learn. But at a high level, what we look at uh, digital transformation at LMA, helping our customers, uh, in turn, they help American, uh, fulfilling American dream in the, in the United States, is all the way from the day that you have an idea that, you know, I want to buy a house. And going through this, uh, you know, whole, uh, you know, from a CRM uh, processing to uh, point of sale processing and uh, whole loan processing, underwriting, closing and funding and post closing and shipping the loan. And in turn, like, you know, even selling that loan to the investors, uh, our lenders uh, do, uh, you know, take care of that one through our platform. So fulfilling all of this process, uh, if you don't have a solution like uh, a LMA solution that our customers leverage today, uh, you have to use like in you know, a multiple set of technologies or manual process in this uh, whole end-to-end uh, -end, uh, process. There is no one single solution out there except uh, LMA that we offer. So that's what a digital transformation in, in our view that we think help our customers uh, uh, provide insights, provide uh, predictive analytics, provide intelligence in every step of this whole home loan process, mortgage process. And in turn, like, you know, uh, two things that we help uh, our customers with, uh, uh, reduce the loan origination cost uh, per loan, and also speed of closing the loan. And those are the two things really our customers care about. And uh, and behind the scenes, our technology is the one which we help them, and uh, uh, that's that's in, that's in my view is a true digital transformation. Think of you as a home buyer. Uh, why would you care about anything? How many papers you sign, or how many play, 
how many people you talk to or how many different companies that you interact with. End of the day, all you want is keys in your hand. And uh, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, if you talk to one person or talk to no person. And uh, that's the that's the digital transformation that we are headed and we are helping our customers. That's a, that's a great answer. I think I think you're, you're spot on that kind of that that customer focus uh, approach is probably one of the the biggest evolutions that that that's kind of contributed to to that digital transformation piece. That's it's a bit of a chicken and an egg. Which came first? You know, did did that customer focus drive digital, or did digital drive that customer focus? Because we're we're kind of more in touch with um with, with the, the the kind of what's happening out in the front. So that's a great answer. And you know, it'd be remiss of me if I didn't ask if I didn't ask you, Bob. So what does um digital mean to Microland? Yeah, I mean, I, I think simply it's in the left hand, you have business, uh, your business process, and in the right hand, you have digital technology. It's the merging of those two things in such a way that you are changing the way you work, which is what I emphasized er earlier. You, you have to merge those two things in a way that changes the way you work that produces a better outcome for your end client. I, I think the, the best example I could give is it's actually just you know something I again I, I heard at a conference um, it was from a the cloud operations leader from a, a Boston based financial institution and just kind of blew my mind as to where you know digital is taking business and the combination of those two and the person went on to talk about how digital is changing the fashion industry and I remember my gut reaction you know as she started to speak was how does digital technology impact fashion right it's just closed and you know, she went on to say, uh, you know, maybe not too much in the distant future. You know, instead of you know, even shopping online uh, as opposed to a store, you might walk down to your neighborhood, you know, walk into a, a little kiosk through body recognition uh, camera. You, know, you basically put yourself on the screen, flash through a bunch of customized uh, design that's you know projected onto your body. You select one, you hit click, and 3D printing your 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 sweater pops out. You know, five minutes later, not a size six, not a size eight, not a size four, but you know, customized to your body uh, because it was detected in the recognition. And you walk out of the store, you walk out of the, the kiosk. That's that's digital. It's changing the entire way you approach a particular business using technology like 3D printing, using you know, facial recognition, body recognition. And just transforming it into something completely different um, that that to me is digital cool yeah another another fantastic answer great um so we, we've got kind of one one final section again there, there are there are loads of questions coming in um all, all sort of focused on this this next piece which of course is the the results the most interesting part what did the, all of this all of this lead to um and i know we've talked uh, a little bit about the, those quantifiable results um but outside of those what sort of um, intangible and tangible benefits did you see from this transformation initiative, um, Santish? So, again, uh, my, the beginning of the conversation I mentioned, so it's all, it all starts with the business value that we bring to the table. And any digital transformation or technology transformation or cloud journey that you use to enable that is speed of innovation to our customers and then how fast do you deliver the business value to, to the customers. That's number one. Number two, and how efficiently you handle uh, uh, the, uh, the internal process by enabling the digital technologies and cloud in the process is are the two main things. And, um, and of course, uh, when you say when you talk about efficiency, you know, uh, cost it could be cost efficiency or like you know the number of uh, human hours you spend on doing certain things. And after digital transformation and uh, leveraging the cloud technologies, how would that change? And uh, those are the main things I looked at. And in my view, uh, the, the biggest thing that I, uh, I see it as a win is the speed of uh, innovation. And, uh, and we were able to uh, see that, witness it in the last uh, two years and how fast we were able to deliver products to our customers and features to our customers by uh, absolutely leveraging the, the, you know, all the technologies that I mentioned earlier. And, uh, and uh, it, it, our customers are the happiest, happy, happy people uh, using those technologies and uh, products that we deliver. So I, I definitely think like, you know, speed of innovation tops the list among all the other benefits. 
Perfect. Thank you. Great, great answer. Because it's, you know, I'm just looking at the, the the type of questions that we've had coming through, and you've sort of ticked about three or four of them off at once, which is always always good. Um, so, I mean, I mean, if if there's one thing we we know about the the kind of the new digital enterprise, it's that more and more pressure will be put on IT um, and infrastructure as enterprises need to constantly move and repitch their their business. Um, and it's something that that when we speak to client references as part of our research they're always saying it's, it's kind of the same thing you know we, we're expected to do so much more to kind of meet these digital demands um has this initiative set you up to to do that so, so uh, yeah. is that for me uh, yes yes sorry i have to see uh, sorry um sorry i was uh, uh, uh i got distracted for a second let me just uh, uh can, can you just repeat the question one more time if you don't mind well, yes, of course, no problem, no problem. So, so one of the one of the, the the things that constantly crops up in conversation a lot for for me anyway is um, the increased pressure that that IT and infrastructure is being placed under as as, as organisations kind of take on these digital challenges. Specifically, that the need to constantly move and repitch their business. Um, and do, do you think this this initiative has set you up um, to be able to handle that sort of challenge? All right. So uh, it's definitely, I mean, uh, once it, it's the, the, easy, the people uh, in any organization are the easy people to convince in any organization are the business people. All you have to show is the business value. And uh, less you talk about technology and the more you talk about the business value and the more they buy in. So uh, I started that uh, uh, with the problem statement. We can solve the problems much faster than what we are today uh, by leveraging the technologies and digital transformation uh, and also cloud journey internally. And the uh, same thing we do to our customers too, right? So, uh, and once you start with that problem statement, uh, I think it bec everything becomes a lot easier. Uh, uh, the, then the, uh, the impact is like much bigger uh, if you deliver uh, you know, products faster and uh, improve the efficiency and uh, uh, overall, like, you know, reducing the, the cost of, like, you know, uh, internal operations, and all of that really adds up to the business value. And uh, in, in our case, like, you know, we, if we start with the right uh, approach and right place, and uh, if you get, like, you know, complete buy-in from all the internal stakeholders, and uh, it, it becomes a lot easier uh, uh, to uh, progress that. Instead, if you take the bottom up approach, sometimes you have to go repitch every single time to different different stakeholders. Then uh, it's a, uh, you probably lose the momentum at some point. My recommendation would be if anybody wants to approach this thing, either digital transformation and leveraging the cloud in the process, uh, start from the top down and set the vision set the goals and set the business uh, objectives and start from there and then uh, everything falls in place automatically after that. It takes a little bit of uh, time to get through the initial inertia, but uh, once you pass that, I think uh, it's a smooth sailing afterwards. Perfect, thank you. And and of course, yeah, enterprises aren't aren't the only ones that that, that need to change. Need to constantly embrace this change. Um, the new digital landscape is is forcing vendors to do a, a bit of soul searching as well. And Bob, you've told us a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of about about your approach. But how is Microland evolving to meet the needs of uh, of, of the modern digital world? Yeah, I mean, I, I I talked a little bit about how we're expanding on the use of automation, but I think really the the most important investment that we're making is in the industrial iot solutions if you think about it at the end of the day you know while cloud software defined networks digital workplace technologies blah 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 you know they're all cool they're all focused on digitization right which is helping an enterprise improve the effectiveness of their processes and systems but with more and more enhan enhanced automation with the larger infrastructure players, um, you know, taking up more capability in that space, um, digitization has been the lifeblood of, of of service providers like ourselves. But the reality is that, you know, with the r rapid advancement of technology, that space is just going to get smaller and smaller over time. Um, so, it, it in order for us to stay relevant, uh, it, it requires us to branch out, and that's why we are uh, investing kind of in the the next frontier where OT and IT come together. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's helping, it's moving from the digitization to helping businesses transform their basic operating models. Um, you know, as an example, 
uh, one of our customers has uh, very expensive equipment that's rented out to mining companies, uh, but they had no means to perform, you know, remote upgrades to the equipment, the software embedded in the equipment. They had no means to really uh, proactively know the health of this equipment. So lots of, if when these things are scattered across the landscape, you know, sending humans to go do readings or to go fix things on a reactive basis is extremely expensive. Um, so we help them with the design and deployment and manage an ongoing uh, IoT solution. They really changed their business operating model and how they service their equipment and, and ultimately brought them, you know, better customer satisfaction, better bottom line. So it's, it's investing in that domain expertise because, um, you know, while IT remains the digital underbelly of that, um, you really need to have the domain expertise to be able to have the authoritative voice as to how to, uh, you know, uh, counsel an enterprise of, of how to change that part of their business. Perfect. Thank you. And great, great example there. Um, so we're, we're approaching the, the end of the webinar that, you know, quite a few questions have come in. It seems like um, a, a lot of the audience are forging their own kind of direction with, with a cloud migration project in supporting broad digital um, initiatives. We don't have a huge amount of time to tackle these. So, so what would be really cool is if you could both give, um, a, I, I guess, a key takeaway that, that you've learned in your, your experience for how to success um, that, that, that kind of touches on, that could touch on different organizations. So starting with you, Bob, that'd be great. Um, I, I've kind of had this theme of, of, you know, keep your business outcomes in mind. You know, I think there's also the aspect of culture, right? So if, if you, I think it's um, before you start, um, whoever is leading the charge, whether it's CDO, CEO, CIO, you know, take the extra time to make sure that everybody's grounded, right? There's lots of buzzwords, there's lots of things to do, there's lots of shiny objects, we've, we've mentioned that here. Take the time to differentiate, you know, uh, between the use of technology, what business outcomes, you know, get everybody up to the same page. Um, I, I think if you don't do that, if you don't ground uh, people in, in what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it, something that should be a three to six month process literally, I mean, I've seen this movie played out over and over again, ends up being a 12 to 18 month process because culture will eat technology for lunch, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, if you don't set yourself up to succeed from the beginning, um, you're just gonna pay for it throughout the, 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 the lifetime of the initiative. That's a great, yeah, that's a great, great point. And I, I overchieved to these, if there's, if there was kind of a single point that, that, that you've kind of learned from this process that, that you could share with the audience. Yeah, so that's a great question. So there is no easy button for these, uh, uh, you know, these things. Either you take digital transformation uh, for your enterprise, or uh, uh, making a decision to, uh, you know, uh, to transform your technology stack, or taking going through the cloud journey. None of these things are easy uh, things to do. Depending on your scale and uh, you know complexity, it could vary. Uh, but uh, uh, your um, strong, uh, uh, you know, uh, vision and uh, direction from top down and uh, internal buy-in from all the stakeholders, that's the key uh, for uh, any transformation. And once you have that alignment internally and strong commitment to make this happen, the IT department alone cannot make things happen or uh, technology department alone cannot make things happen. You have to have full support from your executive team or your business partners and, uh, and your finance team and all the internal stakeholders. You have to have strong commitment as an organ as an enterprise to uh, make a, uh, you know, to break, break through the journey and complete the journey. And I've seen, uh, at least in my experience, I've spoken to, uh, I spoke to multiple uh, leaders in the industry, and uh, uh, I've not come across a single leader till date that, uh, to, uh, you know, that could uh, tell me, hey, we set out these goals and we exceeded the goals. And when it comes to technology transformation or cloud journey or like digitalization, none of these things, people are always ambitious. Hey, I'm going to complete that in two years, but in practice, it takes five years. So uh, uh, it's easy to underestimate, uh, but uh, the complexities you discover through the journey is a lot more than what you can imagine. So I would recommend that you know you think about those things if anybody, if any of you are thinking going through this uh, journey. 
There we go. Two pieces of great advice from our experts. Um, so so uh, that's that's the end of the, the webinar. That's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. So thank you to, to everyone um, in the audience for asking those questions and, and for making a really interactive and fun webinar. And of course, a big thank you to our panelists, um, Bob Wysocki from Microland and Satish Ravala from Ellie May. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.